Good evening. Good evening. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We gather for the first of our Advent midweek services. Uh, we're focusing on uh, Behold uh, the Child, as our bulletins proclaim. Uh, the shepherds behold the child. We see that tonight. Uh, the wise men next week, and then Mary uh, beholding uh, this child and what that means uh, for all of us. Our opening hymn tonight, hymn 300. 49, Hark the Glad Sound. services evening prayer found on page 243. Please stand. And we'll speak the parts of the liturgy instead of sing them. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ. We have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of light, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And we say Psalm 141 together. Let my prayer rise, rise before you, you as incense, the lifting up of my hand as the evening sacrifice. O oh Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. 
Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers, but my eyes are turned to you, O God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host may, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. You can turn to the front part of your hymnal to Psalm 24. We will say Psalm 24 responsively. I'll read the odd number verses, and you can respond with the even number verses, and then we'll all say the glory be to the Father at the end together. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false, and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue with hymn 341.
Our Old Testament lesson comes from Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. So that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our epistle lesson comes from 1 John chapter 4. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God if we love one another. God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the father has sent his son to be the savior of the world. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel lesson comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled, filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But, but now, now in these, these last days, days he, he has, has spoken, spoken to us by, by his son. son. In your worship folder, there is a responsive reading. It comes from a, a 14th century hymn. And uh, we uh, read now. He whom shepherds once came praising, awed by heavenly light blazing, cheered by angel news amazing, King of glory, Christ is born. The glorious angels came today, a glow with light into the night of darkness deep, to shepherds who by moon's bright ray, <laughs> Joy, great joy and tidings glad we bring from heaven resounding. For you, for you, and all the world's eye. God's own son is born a child, is born a child. God the Father is reconciled, is reconciled. 
this hymn has four verses. We'll read one of those verses each week, and it helps to focus our message for that week. Uh, the first four lines traditionally, uh, 600 years ago, would have been sung by the children, and then the other verses by the choir, and the last two lines by everyone uh, together in each verse. Uh, but these verses uh, serve to focus us upon the shepherds in this Advent season and uh, the second to last or the third to last line uh, for you, for you and all the world abounding um, our theme for this evening for you and all the world. We look at our text in, in three parts. Uh, first, a savior for some shepherds. Secondly, a savior for you. And third, a savior for all the world. A savior for some shepherds. It's amazing, isn't it, really? Who gets the Christmas announcement? Who gets the news that Jesus is born? Some lowly shepherds out in the field doing their duty, watching the sheep. You know, uh, being a shepherd back then, it was the job of last resort. If you couldn't get any other job, if you couldn't hold any other job, they were always hiring shepherds. You could get that kind of a job. Why? Well, because it was a job that had no comfort, right? You were out in the elements. Rain, sun, snow, whatever it was, you were there. No pillow, you were moving around. There was no comfort in being a shepherd. And there was no safety. You were in danger. There were thieves around coming to steal sheep. If they had to kill you to steal the sheep, so be it. There were wolves who would attack, who wanted a delicious meal. They too might attack you. There was no safety in being a shepherd. And there was no time off. It was a 24-7 job, right? You didn't just work 9 to 5 and, and go back to town or leave the sheep. No, you had to watch those sheep all the time. There's no comfort, no safety, no time off. Shepherds were a despised kind of class. They were rough and, and gruff. Uh, they were dirty and, and smelly. Uh, it was the job of last resort and their reputation was not very good. So, even more amazing, right? That the angels come to these shepherds and say, unto you, shepherds, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Savior who is the Messiah, the Christ, the Lord. And not just one angel comes with this message, but there's a whole choir of angels. What other person in the whole world has seen a choir of angels? But these shepherds, the heavenly host, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth. God is coming to reconcile. The Father is reconciling with these dirty, lowly shepherds. Good news, great joy for the shepherds. And what do they do? They say in our text, let us go. Let us go and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us. They go with haste. They run. They leave the sheep. They run to check it out. They get to the stable and they behold the child. They behold the baby. The Savior of the world. And then... They make known what they've seen. They tell everyone what's happened about this baby. And finally, they return to the fields, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. A Savior for some shepherds. That's nice, but point two of our outline is even better. That is, a Savior for you. The best words of this account are the words unto you. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ Lord. Unto you, for you, 
Jesus has come. The angel says, I bring you good news of great joy. Yes, this is for you. It's not just for some shepherds. It's also for you. You. You who also are one of the least deserving of a Savior. Least deserving of a God who would have to become a shepherd. A good shepherd to come and save you. A God who would give up all the comfort of heaven to be a shepherd down on earth. A God who would give up all the safety to come down in human flesh and be vulnerable. To put his life on the line. In fact, coming knowing it would be certain death to come and live on this earth. The shepherd who comes to lay down his life for his sheep. Yeah, there was no comfort, there was no safety, and there would be no time off. It was not an easy job to be your savior. Not an easy job at all. And yet, there was one, one who signed up for that job, Jesus. Jesus signs up for the job to be your Savior. And the angels, they celebrate this Savior, this shepherd, Jesus. They say, not just to the shepherds, but they say to you, unto you, unto each of you sitting here, unto you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. This is good news of great joy. And my friends, it is for you. If you remember no other words from tonight, just those two, for you. And third and finally, though, our text would also tell us this is a Savior for all the world. It's not just for some shepherds, and not even just for you, but it's for all the world. It's what the Kempis Carol proclaims as well for you and all the world. Yes, the Christmas gospel is personal for you, but it's also universal. Personal and universal. It is for you, you, and for you all. For you singular and for you plural. For you all, there is good news of great joy for all the people, for everyone, for all the shepherds, for all the sinners in the world, all the people of the world. Our text says, all who heard wondered at what the shepherds told them. The shepherds told it, and all who heard wondered, pondered this event. God coming into human flesh, announced by the angels, a baby in a stable. Yes, for you and all the world. That's why our first reading was from Genesis, God's word to Abram, that all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the families of the earth shall be blessed in this baby. And in the second reading from 1 John, the love of God is made manifest in this, that God has sent His Son. God loved us, sent His Son to pay for our sins so that we and all the world might behold this child. It's what we do this Advent and Christmas season. And like the shepherds, we make known this birth. We proclaim it. We share it. And we return, like the shepherds, glorifying and praising God for who He is and for what He's done. Yes, my friends, this Advent season, behold the child for you and for all the world. Amen. We continue 
with the uh, canticle, uh, which is hymn 934. gather our tithes and offerings. Also make sure you sign the red folder as well to record your attendance with us. Page 249, please rise. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For President Harrison and President Fondo, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all, all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For President Trump, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await the Lord great and who await the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those who mourn and grieve, may they be comforted by you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Alleluia. Help, save, comfort, and defend, defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> Thy will be done on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn.
special welcome to all of you this evening. Thanks for being here for this Advent season. Um, our JCT youth have uh, cookies and, and bars downstairs and invite you to uh, join uh, them for that. Eighth grade are serving tonight and seventh grade next week and sixth grade the week after that. So coffee is decaf and lemonade and water as well. Uh, Christmas brunch is uh, next Sunday uh, from 10 to noon. Youth are serving us again. Um, also this week uh, is the picture directory picture. So if you signed up for pictures, just a reminder that those are taking place tomorrow, uh, Friday and, and Saturday as well. And then also on the 16th. Tomorrow, all women are invited to the LDML uh, Christmas program, uh, two o'clock. It'll be in the basement and come and enjoy that uh, foot care tomorrow morning. Um, also, I think the choir is going to practice tonight after church. Is that right or not? I'm not sure, but check with the choir people, maybe. Um, and uh, pray the Lord be with you all and uh, bless you this Advent season.